Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Niels Goed. I work as a solutions architect for Stormforge. And today I would like to present, you know, how to put the auto back into auto scaling in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, I'll go over, you know, what the auto scalers are that are part of Kubernetes, how they work, what they work on, um, <clears throat> what the potential issues might be. And at the very end, I will uh, introduce uh, Stormforge Optimize Live as a potentially better version of the autoscalers. So, uh, yeah, sit tight for that. Why do we even need autoscalers, right? So, um, running microservices on Kubernetes is, uh, is all about efficiency, is all about availability, is all of how, about speed of deployment and things like that. Um, but somebody has to decide on, you know, how much resources a microservice needs. And quite often that's the developer of the, uh, of the microservice. Now, if the developer is fair, very familiar with the components that he is using for the application, he might have, you know, some sort of knowledge, uh, experience with that microservice and, you know, how much CPU or memory potentially that would need and things of that nature. Now, if he doesn't, um, how is he going to know? So we'll we'll discuss uh, that as well. Uh, the other thing is that once a developer has finished developing the application, obviously he's going to ma be maintaining it, but he's going to hand it over to potentially a different team, like the operations part of the uh, organization or SREs. Uh, and then they become more or less responsible for setting uh, resources. And obviously that's a challenge as well if you don't know the application. The other thing is that, you know, we are all forced to be more efficient from a resource perspective, from a cost perspective. Um, and if you take that a bit too far in the Kubernetes environment, uh, you might end up, you know, um, requesting to, uh, you know, not enough resources potentially for your microservice. So you could run into CPU throttling, you could run into out of memory, uh, errors, pods being evicted, and all that stuff. So uh, obviously we want to prevent that from happening. So the way we can do that, one of the ways we can do that is by leveraging the Kubernetes autoscalers. There's actually uh, three of them that come native with Kubernetes. First one being vertical pod autoscaler, VPA. Then we have the horizontal pod autoscaler, HPA. And there's also the cluster autoscaler. Now the VPA, what it will do is it will actually look at the actual usage of your containers and based on you know historic information uh, it will decide on what potentially a good setting would be for cpu and memory resources um, and it will allow you to set those automatically so you don't have to do that manually per se uh, you can have the uh, vpa do that for you now the downside of that is that if you change uh, VPA settings in the current releases of Kubernetes, this is going to potentially result in redeploying the application uh, because the new settings need to take uh, effect. So if you do that very often, that's going to result in potentially uh, interruption of your application, depending on how the application is built. The HPA, the horizontal pod autoscaler, what that does, it doesn't change the settings of the pod itself, of the uh, container itself, but at a specific, what we call target utilization, um, it will tr decide to scale out. So if you have, for instance, two replicas of a pod running, uh, at some point it can decide that we need a third pod to be able to um, you know, provide the performance that we need. And then the cluster autoscaler, what that does, it, it will actually add nodes to your cluster so if you're running in VMs or if you're running on public cloud, it can automatically add nodes to your cluster so that you have more power, more uh, CPU, more memory that you can then leverage by running more uh, microservices. So requests and limits are part of the um, pod. So every pod uh, can contain one or multiple containers. These containers need CPU and memory resources, obviously. And what you can do is you can set requests. Now, requests are more or less uh, guaranteed resources. So what will happen is that the Kubernetes uh, scheduler, when it looks on, at you know, which node to run your uh, microservice on, it will look at the requests and decides if it has sufficient resources on that node to be able to run that microservice. 
if you set a limit, which is optional, um, that kind of limits obviously the uh, amount of resources that the bot can leverage. So you can set requests as a guaranteed amount of resources and you can set a limit as a maximum amount of resources. And this is that you, something that you can do manually. Uh, like I said, if you know the microservice very well, you might have an idea of you know what would be a good value to, uh, to leverage. If you don't, you can have something like VPA figure that out for you, um, which is obviously also a good option. Target utilization. Uh, so this is uh, one of the configuration items that you uh, have for HPA, the horizontal pod outer scaler. If you set a target utilization, let's say of 70%, what will happen is the HPA will look at the average utilization of resources uh, within the different microservices, within the different replicas of a microservice. And if that reaches the target utilization, it will decide to scale out. It will not do that immediately. So if there's a peak or a burst in, in research consumption, it will wait like five minutes by default. Um, and then if the, um, you know, the resource usage stays over a lengthy period of time, it will decide to scale out. Uh, obviously you can set boundaries like minimum number of replicas, maximum number of replicas. Uh, so if the maximum hasn't been reached, multiple copies can be uh, started to make sure that we stay below the uh, target utilization. Now in an ideal world, uh, like I described, the developer knows its application, knows, you know, you know an application can obvious, obviously consist of multiple microservices, uh, but if he knows all the, if he or she knows all the microservices very well, he he or she can decide on, you know, the number of resources needed, set those manually, um, and then, you know, make sure that the application runs well. The one thing that we see quite often though, and that's actually topic of the next slide, is that people don't know very well. So either they have to guess, they might use some defaults that are documented, or if they want to do it very thoroughly, uh, what they will do is analyze the application requirements, right? So they will look at the different microservices that make up the application. They will um, more or less set up a baseline um, with default settings that they start working with. And then, you know, one way of uh, exercising the application, making sure that it performs well is by running, uh, leveraging a load test against it, and then see how the different pods uh, react and how the HPA reacts by scaling out potentially. Um, and then obviously you have to make sure that it performs well. You have to fine tune that. And that's basically a trial and error process, adjusting some settings. And if you have multiple microservices, you know, how does the changing of resources affect the performance of other potentially uh, resources, um, bots? So there's a chain of reactions that you can potentially have with, you know, changing parameters on, on different microservices. Uh, so that's, like I said, that's a trial and error process. And then you have to come up with, you know, what you think is uh, the correct set of, uh, of resources. Now, the usage of an application is usually not, you know, static, it tends to be dynamic. So if that's the case, you might have to reevaluate all these settings and, and changes, uh, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, and potentially this lasts as long as the application runs. So this can be quite a bit of effort, quite a bit of uh, manual effort that you have to put in to, uh, to make sure that your application keeps running. Now, if you have multiple applications and most organizations obviously will have that, um, you have to do this for every microservice in every application. So it can be quite tedious and very time consuming. And if you consider that there's not that many people that, you know, know Kubernetes very well, uh, in an organization, you don't want these people to be basically manually tuning your applications. Now, what we see is that when people leverage autoscaling, um, like the HPA, for instance, uh, they tend to, you know, they, they might consider lowering the request because quite often people tend to over-provision the resources quite heavily just to make sure that the application runs really well. Uh, knowing that they can leverage something like HPA, they might be willing to lower that a little bit. But still, if you are still over-provisioned and you're leveraging HPA, when you're scaling out, uh, we still see that you're also multiplying the problem of having the over-provisioning. 
So in the graph that you see here on the left, the actual usage of the um, application is displayed with the white line. Then up here, we see the orange line. This is the request uh, for this particular application. And as you can see, the request is about five CPUs. The actual usage is somewhere between half a CPU and two CPUs. So everything that is marked as red here is basically wasted resources. Um, if you set it too aggressive, if you set the request too low, you might come in something really different, which is that you know some wasted resources might still be there, but you might also run into situations where the actual usage crosses the um, you know the request limit. Um, and in that case, you might run into CPU throttling. You might run out of memory where the pod will actually be evicted, so it will be stopped. Um, and that's obviously a situation that where you don't want to be in as well. Now. Many people will start with HPA because it has the least amount of impact on your application. Uh, it's fairly simple to configure and it can respond really rapidly, right? So if you see that the um, usage of your application is bursting, um, you know, it's quite easy for HPA to spin up multiple replicas of the same pods uh, to make, make sure that we can cope with the, um, the load that is on the application. But how are you going to decide on the target utilization? So the target utilization is the you know, level of usage of resources at which HPA can decide, you know, I need to scale up, so I need to add more pods. Um, how are you going to decide on that? Because there's you know, several things that you need to take in consideration. If you scale out too soon, you're basically multiplying the uh, wasted resources. If you scale too late, it might take you know, a long time for the pod to get started. Um, and you're still seeing performance issues. So how do you come up with uh, a decent setting? What I was trying to say earlier, you know, if you're using HPA, uh, you're still gonna see wasted resources. Even though your response is gonna be fast and you know you might have uh, trimmed down the, uh, the resources requests, um, there's also, there's always going to be some slack in there. There's also going to be some, some headroom in there. So if you're then scaling out, you're going to be multiplying these, uh, these wasted resources. It's going to be less, but still there's going to be wasted resources. This is one of the reasons why I said, you know, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, Stormforge Optimized Life. So Stormforge Optimized Life, what it does, it actually looks at the metrics of the individual containers. Um, it will compare those, you know, the, the requests and limits that have been set. We call them the baseline. Uh, we will compare that to the actual usage and we leverage machine learning to come up with a very decent recommendation that is going to be as close as possible to uh, the actual usage of the uh, resources. Uh, and that is fully automated and uh, it's continuous. So it's something that happens every um, five minutes. We, we collect the metrics, we, we feed them to the machine learning, then the machine learning will come up with a recommendation. Um, you can have these recommendations be applied you know, once an hour, once a day, once a week. And the machine learning will also take in consideration the peaks of usage that they have seen, that, that it has seen over this, this period of time to make sure that we never, um, you know, run out of resources, basically. So the machine learning will do all the heavy lifting. Uh, it does it continuously. So like I said before, if you want to do this manually, you will have to revisit this over and over again to make sure that the application keeps running uh, very well. Uh, with Optimized Life, the machine learning will do all of this for you and it will do a much better job than humans usually can do manually because it will just look at the um, you know, actual usage of metrics uh, all of the time. It does not only basically replace VPA, so it will not only do the um, CPU and memory requests and limits for you, but it can also come up with the best possible target utilization for HPA. Uh, to work in the most optimal fashion. The way it works is you install a small agent in your cluster. If you have multiple clusters, you're going to install an agent per cluster. It will automatically go out and discover all your workloads. So all the pods, all the deployments, things like that, it will discover automatically. Um, and it will start collecting the metrics, to, so the performance information of these uh, workloads. And then after a couple of hours, it will start giving you uh, recommendations. And then 
all you have to do is basically decide how often do I want to get a recommendation and whether or not you want to deploy those recommendations automatically. Uh, you can also do it manually. And if you prefer, you can also uh, basically export them to a YAML file so you can run it through um, a Git repository, for instance, and use your GitOps uh, workflow instead. So this is a continuous process. You set it and you forget it, and it does it all for you. The way it works in the in the backend from a more technical architectural uh, perspective is that we install a small agent in your cluster. Uh, like I said, it will go out and discover the, um, the workloads. It will feed the performance metrics to the machine learning of uh, that we use uh, in Stormforge. The machine learning will come up with a recommendation and show that to you in the UI. Um, if you want, you can also install the applier if you want to do automatic applying of the recommendations. Uh, that needs to be installed on the cluster as well, so it can, you know, um, change the uh, the deployments, for instance, um, and that's all. Right from you know the start, uh, we will display all the workloads that have been discovered. If you have multiple clusters, we will show you which clusters will have the highest impact if you actually apply the recommendations that the machine learning has come up with. Uh, it will also show you directly how much you know resources you're going to be saving like how much cpu are you going to be saving how much memory are you going to be saving and what the financial impact will be there's a there's going to be an indication of that as well um, in some cases it might also be the case that your application is actually under provisioned which means it has not enough memory not enough cpu uh, so it can also be that the machine learning actually you know comes up with a recommendation to add more resources to it uh, which is obviously not going to save you any money, but it is going to make sure that your application runs really, really well. So, yeah, you can definitely use, um, you know, things like uh, VPA and HPA to make your life easier to come up with, you know, how much resources you're going to need for uh, for your applications. And then, you know, if the change, if the if there's a change of usage of your application, uh, have HPA respond to that and scale out so that you always have sufficient performance. If you want to do it you know, more precise if you want to do it automatically, if you want to do it continuously. So basically a no effort optimization of your complete environment, uh, you can definitely consider something like uh, Stormforge Optimized Live. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and maybe see you live somewhere, some event in the future. Thank you.